another common sort of gloom uh, comment I get from people who are saying, we're just screwed, there's no hope, is, well, things like GPT-4 are way too complicated for a human to ever understand mm -hmm. and prove that they can be trustworthy. They're forgetting that AI can help us prove that things work, right? Yeah. And, and there's this very fundamental fact that in math, it's much harder to come up with a proof than it is to verify that the proof is correct. You can actually write a little proof checking code. It's quite short, but you can as human understand. And then it can check the most monstrously long proof ever generated even by a computer and say, yeah, this is valid. So so, so right now we, we have um, this, uh, this approach with virus checking software that it looks to see if there's something if you should not trust it. And if it can prove to itself that you should not trust that code, mm -hmm. it warns you, mm -hmm. right? What if you flip this around? And this is an idea I should give credit to Steve Omohundro for. So that it will only run the code if it can prove, instead of not running it, if it can prove that it's not trustworthy, if it will only run it, if it can prove that it's trustworthy. So it asks the code, prove to me that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. And and it gives you this proof. And you, a little proof checker, can check it. Now you can actually trust an AI that's much more intelligent than you are, right? Because you, it's its problem to come up with this proof that you could never have found, uh, that you should trust it. So this is the interesting point. I, I agree with you, but this is where Eliezer Yakovsky might disagree with you. His claim, not with you, but with this idea, is his claim is a super intelligent AI would be able to know how to lie to you with such a proof. How to lie to you and give me a proof that I'm gonna think is correct? Yeah. But, so it, but he, it's not me it's lying to, it has to trick my proof checker. So it's a yes. piece of code. So his general idea is a super intelligent system can lie to a dumber proof checker. So you're going to have, as a system becomes more and more intelligent, there's going to be a threshold where a super intelligent system would be able to effectively lie to a slightly dumber AGI system. Uh, like there's a threat, like he really focuses on this weak AGI to strong AGI jump, where the strong AGI yeah. can make all the weak AGIs think that it's just one of them, but it's no longer that. And that uh, leap is yeah. when it runs away. From yeah, I, I don't buy that argument. I think no matter how super intelligent an AI is, it's never gonna be able to prove to me that there are only finitely many primes, for example. <laughs> and it, <laughs> yeah. just, it just can't. And, and um, it can try to snow me by making up all sorts of new weird rules of, of deduction that, and say, trust me, you know, the way your proof checker works is too limited, and we have this new hypermath, and it's true. <laughs> uh, but then I would, I would just uh, take the attitude: okay, I'm going to forfeit some of these, the supposedly super cool technologies. I'm only going to go with the ones that I can prove with my own trusted proof checker. Sure. Then I don't. I think it's fine. There's still, of course, this is not the, something anyone has successfully implemented at this point. But I think it, it, I just give it as an example of hope. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do all the work ourselves, right? This is exactly the sort of very boring and tedious task that is perfect to outsource to an AI. Mm -hmm. And this is a way in which less powerful and less intelligent agents like us can actually continue to control and trust more powerful ones. So build AGI systems that help us defend against other AGI systems. Well, for starters, begin with a simple problem of just making sure that the system that you own or that's supposed to be loyal to you has to prove to itself that it's always going to do the things that you actually want it to do, right? And if it can't prove it, maybe it's still going to do it, but you won't run it. So you just forfeit some aspects of all the cool things AI can do. I, I bet you dollars to donuts, it can still do some incredibly cool stuff for you. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are other things too that we shouldn't sweep under the rug. Like not every human agrees on exactly what, where, what direction we should go with humanity, right? Yes. And you've talked a lot about uh, geopolitical things on this on on your podcast to this effect, you know. But I think that shouldn't distract us from the fact that there are actually a lot of things that everybody in the world virtually agrees on. That hey, you know, like having a, no humans on the planet in a, in a in a near future. Nah, let's not do that, right? Mm -hmm. 
you look at something like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, some of them are quite amb amb ambitious. And uh, basically all the countries agree. US, China, Russia, Ukraine, they all agree. Mm -hmm. So instead of quibbling about the little things we don't agree on, let's start with the things we do agree on and, and, and get them done. Instead of being so distracted by all these things we disagree on, that Moloch wins because, frankly, Moloch going wild now. It feels like a war on life playing out in front of our eyes. If, if you if you just look at it from space, you know, mm -hmm. we're on this planet, beautiful, vibrant ecosystem. Now we start chopping down big parts of it, even though nobody, most people thought that was a bad idea. Always oh, start doing ocean acidification, wiping out all sorts of species. Oh, now we have all these close calls. We almost had a nuclear war. And we're replacing more and more of the biosphere with non-living things. We're also replacing in our social lives a lot of the things which were so valuable to humanity. A lot of social interactions now are replaced by people staring into their rectangles, right? And I, I'm not a psychologist. I'm out of my depth here, but I suspect that part of the reason why teen suicide and suicide in general in the U.S. is at record-breaking levels is actually caused by, again, AI, so AI technologies and social media making people spend less time with with, with actual and actually just human interaction. We've all seen uh, a bunch of good-looking people in restaurants staring <laughs> into the rectangles instead of looking into each other's eyes, right? Mm -hmm. The, 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 so that's also a part of the war on life that that we're we're replacing so many really life affirming things by technology. We're we're putting technology between us. The the technology that was supposed to connect us is actually distancing us ourselves from each other, and um, and uh, and then we're giving ever more power to things which are not alive. These large corporations are not living things, right? They're just maximizing profit. Uh, they're. I want to win the war on life. I, I think we humans, together with all our fellow living things on this planet, will be better off if we can remain in control over the non-living things and make sure that they, they they work for us. I really think it can be done. Can you just linger on this? Uh, maybe high-level philosophical disagreement with Eliezer Yudkowsky uh, in this, the hope you're stating. So he is very sure. He puts a very high probability, very close to one, depending on the day he puts it at one, uh, that AI is going to kill humans. Mm -hmm. That there's just, he does not see a trajectory which it doesn't end up with that conclusion. What uh, what trajectory do you see that doesn't end up there? And maybe can you can you see the point he's making, and and can you also see a way out? Mm -hmm. First of all, I tremendously respect Elias Yudkowsky and his his thinking. Second, I do share his view that there's a pretty large chance that we're not going to make it as humans. There won't be any humans on the planet. In the not too distant future, and, and that makes me very sad. You know, we just had a little baby, and I keep asking myself, you know, is um, how old is he even going to get? You know, and and um, I ask myself, it feels. I, I said to my wife recently, it feels a little bit like I was just diagnosed with some sort of um, cancer, which has some you know risk of of dying from and some risk of surviving. You know. Uh, except this is a kind of cancer which would kill all of humanity. So I, I completely take seriously his his um, his concerns. I think, um, but I don't absolutely don't think it's hope, hopeless. I think um, there is a there is a, first of all a lot of momentum now. For the first time, actually, since the many many years that have passed since. My, since I and many others started war warning about this, I feel most people are getting it now. I, I, I uh, was just talking to this guy in the gas station near our house the other day. Mm -hmm. My, 
And he's like, I think we're getting replaced. And then, I think in it, so th that's positive that they're, they're finally, we're still finally seeing this reaction, which is the first step towards solving the problem. Uh, second, uh, I really think that this this vision of only running AIs really, if the stakes are really high, they can prove to us that they're safe. It's really just virus checking in reverse again. I, I think it's scientifically doable. I don't think it's hopeless. Um, we might have to forfeit some of the technology that we could get if we were putting blind faith in our AIs, but we're still going to get amazing stuff. Do you envision a process with a proof checker, like something like GPT-4 or GPT-5 would go through a process no. of rigorous no. interrogation? No, I think it's hopeless. That's like trying to proof verify spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I think, well, how the, the, whole, the vision I have for success is instead that, you know, just like we human beings were able to look at our brains and and distill out the key knowledge. Galileo, right. when his dad threw him an apple when he was a kid, he was able to catch it because his brain could, in this funny spaghetti kind of way, you know, predict how parabolas are going to move. Mm -hmm. His Kahneman system one, right? But then he got older, and it's like, wait, this is a parabola. It's it's uh, y equals x squared. I can distill this knowledge out, and today you can easily program it into a computer, and it can simulate not just that, but how to get to Mars and so on, right? Mm -hmm. I envision a similar process where we use the, the amazing learning power of neural networks to discover the knowledge in the first place, but we don't stop with a black box and, and use that. We then do a second round of AI where we use automated systems to extract out the knowledge and see what is it, what are the insights it's had. Okay, and it's and then we we put that knowledge into a completely different kind of. Uh, architecture or programming language or whatever that's that's made in a way that can, it can be both really efficient and also is more amenable to, to very formal verification. Mm -hmm. that, that's my vision. I'm not saying sitting here saying I'm confident, 100% sure that it's going to work. You know, But I don't think the chance is certainly not zero either. And it will certainly be possible to do for a lot of really cool AI applications that we're not using now, so we can have a lot of the fun that we're excited about if we if we do this. We're going to need a little bit of time. Uh, that's why it's good to pause and, and put in place re requirements. Um, one more thing, also, I, I think uh, you know someone might think, well, zero percent chance we're going to survive. Let's just give up, right? Mm -hmm. That's very dangerous. We, because there's no more guaranteed way to fail than to convince yourself that it's impossible and not to try. You know, any if you, you know when you study history and military history, the first thing you learn is that that's, that's how you do psychological warfare. You persuade the other side that it's hopeless, so they don't even fight, and then then of course you win, right? Let's not do this uh, psychological warfare on ourselves. And say there's a hundred percent probability we're all gonna, we're all screwed anyway. It's sadly I, I do get that a little bit sometimes from from uh, some young people who are like so convinced that we're all screwed that they're like I'm just gonna play game play computer games and do drugs and because we're screwed anyway, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's important to keep the hope alive because it actually has a causal impact and make, it makes it more likely that we're going to succeed. It seems like the people that actually build solutions to a problem, seemingly impossible to solve problems, are the ones that believe. Yeah. They're the ones who are the optimists. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it seems like there's some fundamental law to the universe where fake it till you make it kind of works. Like believe yeah. it's possible yeah. and it becomes possible. Yeah. Was it Henry Ford who said that if you can, if you tell yourself that it's impossible, it is. So let's not make that mistake. Yeah. And this is a big mistake society is making. I think all in all, everybody's so gloomy, and the media are also very biased towards if it bleeds, it leads, and gloom and doom, right? So, um, most visions of the future we have are, are dystopian, which really demotivates people. Uh, we want to really, really, really focus on the upside, also to give people the willingness to fight for it, and. Um, for AI, you and I mostly talked about gloom here again, but let's not remember, not forget that you know we have probably both lost someone we really cared about to some disease. 
that we were told were in, was incurable. Well, it's not. There's no law of physics saying they have to die of that cancer or whatever. Of course you can cure it. And there are so many other things where that we, with our human intelligence, have also failed to, to solve on this planet, which AI could also very much help us with, right? So if we can get this right, just be a little more chill and slow down a little bit so we get it right, it's mind-blowing how awesome our future can be. Uh, we talked a lot about stuff on Earth that can be great. But even if you really get ambitious and look up at the skies, right, there's no reason we have to be stuck on this planet for the rest of um, the, the remain for billions of years to come. We totally understand now that the laws of physics let life spread out into space to other solar systems, to other galaxies, and flourish for billions and billions of years. And this, to me, is a very, very hopeful vision that really motivates me to to fight. And coming back to, in the end to something you talked about again, you know, this the struggle, how the human struggle is one of the things that also really gives meaning to our lives. If there's ever been an epic struggle, this is it. And isn't it even more epic if you're the underdog? If most people are telling you this is going to fail, it's impossible, right? And you persist and you succeed. Right? And that's what we can do together as a species on this one. A lot of pundits are ready to count us out. Both in the battle to keep AI safe and becoming a multiplanetary species. Yeah, and they're, they're the same challenge. If we can keep AI safe, that's how we're going to get multiplanetary very efficiently.